John Cleese is 36. He's married to Connie Booth, who wrote Faulty Towers with him. They live in West London. He's on his way home for lunch. I used to do a great routine on tube trains on my own. He used to just stand there staring out of the window. And then the right hand, it was from a sketch, used to do this kind of thing. You see, and then you turn and you look at somebody you've pre-picked and they're always absolutely fixed on you like that. And then you look and they look away and try not to look again. And the hand comes up. And the moment that you see their head turn, you go, look at the brigade. Well, if I do that now, somebody just say, oh, it's that bloke on the television thing. He's so bloody funny, you know. He has got a very good mind indeed. The one thing he doesn't have, he doesn't stick to things. Um, the amount of times he started to learn Arabic or Chinese or the philosophy of doormats or whatever, it, the first 30 pages of a book are always well read and he reads them very conscientiously. And this is rather true of driving. The amount of times he's had driving lessons and driving tests, I don't know. Cleese was born in Western Supermare. His father sold insurance. At school, he grew very tall. By the age of 10, he was 5 feet 8 inches, and he realised then his talent to amuse. I think I've been a very unpopular school kid because I've been shy, awkward, not a good mixer. And then I think when I was about 10 or 11 in Mr Sanger Davis's class, I discovered I could make funny remarks. And many thanks to him for allowing me to make them. He went to Clifton College, a public school in Bristol, and from there... ..to Downing College, Cambridge. Cleese read law. It was something of a family tradition. He graduated with a good degree and a place at a top city firm of solicitors. But he rejected it. I actually enjoyed it the first couple of years, but the third, the third year, when we got down to evidence and real property and equity and stuff like that, oh, my God, it was dull. I mean, it was frightening. So I was up and off. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? I mean, the only thing I have to show, three years education at Cambridge is a 12-minute court sketch. <laughs> when I was 16, everyone told me, John, the thing to do is to get a good qualification. You go in an accountant's office now, by the time you're 37, you'll have um, several letters after your name, you know, you'll be able to get married. Get, you know, it was all that kind of feeling. Fine, it's one type of life, but it was laid down to me, you know, as a sort of golden pathway leading up to the ACA, you know. I think there's something manic in, in me. Yes, there's something manic somewhere in me. And I think it's something to do with um, being trapped in a kind of um, a shell of lower middle class, and this is lower middle class um, reasonableness and politeness. And sometimes I get very angry and I find it frightfully difficult to be angry. And I think uh, anger in particular, but I also, people talk to me at parties sometimes, you know, and they really do talk, talk at me. And I have fantasies about picking things up, you know, cheese dips, you know. But I've never had the courage to do it, you see. I can do it on stage, you know, Basil Forty did it. We went to a party after Python film or something, and Victor Lowndes said, do come over. And I said, I, I said, no, no, you know, he said, come on, come on over. And he took me over to a merchant bank and said, oh, this is John Cleese, who was in the film. The merchant banker did that thing of saying, ah, I do not know. One well, the other thing, you know, so that he's looking in one direction, <laughs> shaking hands, which he really is, you know. And I went and I got in the taxi and I was seething and all I could think of was, um, with this line came to me, um, I, uh, I don't know my name but I'm a merchant banker. You know, and it came to me because that was it, some merchant banker, that was all he needed, his own individuality didn't matter. John sort of, so much Basil, or parts of him and of his father, whom we both know, knew pretty well, that um, it's familiar, to, it was familiar to both of us, you know. <laughs> I have a feeling that situations could arise when I would almost go as berserk as Basil. Oh, really? Yeah, really. His success has been considerable, but it has not been gained without pain. He's very, very self-critical, over-critical um, of himself. He should be kinder to himself, <laughs> I think. Um, he gives himself a very hard time. I think he does self-analyse a lot and I think we would disagree here. I think he self-analyzes too much.
But I think uh, most of the people working in comedy seem to seem to have depressions. Whether they're any worse, better or worse than than people in other jobs, I I'm not sure. But I suspect there's there's something about the depressive temperament that seems to produce comics. <laughs>